me. Uh, let me see here. Agenda for tonight. Okay. Okay, so today is December 20th, 2023. It is 6.34 p.m. and I am calling to order the meeting for the Town of Amherst Human Rights Commission. Can you um, give us the time? Did you say it's 6.33? Yes. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so by Zoom or by telephone. You can see the instructions below. They are posted on our website and also on this agenda. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time by technological means. We have a call to order. Um, does anybody have any opening remarks? Before you go to opening remarks, can you do the roll call to make sure everybody can be heard? Oh, yeah. All righty. Um, right now we have Liz Haygood as co-chair, present. Ronnie Parker, co-chair. You're, you're muted. Present. Thank you. Um, Rizwana Khan. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Deborah Kaladny. Oops. Present. Joy Eiffel. Present. Uh, we are not in presence of, okay, I'm blanking on names now, Tyler and Jacinta. 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 Uh, our, and Laverne Brown is also absent from this meeting. We also have our intern, Asa Stanley, the EI intern. Hello. Thank you. Our Director of Equity and Inclusion, Pamela Young. Hello. And Assistant Director of um, Diversity is Jennifer Moyston. Good evening. And Raswana, did I miss somebody? I saw your Laverne hand go Kelly up. Kelly is here. She was raising her hand. Oh. Laverne Kelly. Just moved her in. Okay. We also have Laverne Kelly. Um, if you would mark yourself present, please. Present. Thank you. So we do have a quorum. So anything we need to vote on, it can happen tonight. Thank you, everybody, for your attendance at this meeting. Um agenda announcements and agenda review does anybody have any uh broad announcements that are not part of the discussion for tonight okay um our agenda we will first have um public comment and then member reports then we will have uh discussions on supporting organization statements events the dei and hrc or both updates on crest and DEI, that the Chief of Police and Crest Directors search updates, the budget request, affordable housing trust, town manager update. Um, also, any things that we need to mention that have been recently put on our HRC website or into our Facebook page and upcoming events. Then we will have another round of public comments if needed. We will set our next meeting date and then go into other topics that were not anticipated 48 hours prior to this meeting before we adjourn. So um, the first thing I... Well, Pamela has her hand raised. Okay, Pamela. I can't see if it's Hi, right over I'm, the I'm sorry. I um, Before we got started um, going through the remainder of the agenda, I had um, one question or maybe... a. a related to some of the topics that are listed. So with the police chief and the Crest director search, are you expecting those to be um, member reports since there are members on both of those searches or are you looking from um, input or information from the DEI office? I have 
um, a member report okay. for the police chief search. I also know that unfortunately Ronnie had to be away for the first few uh, discussions for the crest director, but she will be jumping on board. So she may be able to give a little bit of update I there. I would like to give an update. And okay, so they're yeah, actually right. member reports. Right, so, th so they're not gonna be addressed under DEI and CREST? No. Okay. I put All it right. on the agenda. I felt that, well, since some of us are part of these searches that we should be reporting to the commission about progress and taking any commission questions into consideration. That's perfect. I just wanted to clarify clarify that it wasn't an expectation of, of us. No. No. So one announcement that I have is I was just perusing um, the, uh, I don't know if you all know that Mindy Dom um, does a, an update on her website about things that are going on in um, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as they relate to her district. And it just came out yesterday. What did I just do with it? So I was just perusing and it has a lot of, if anybody gets that, um, you should really take a look at it. And if not, um, it has updates on um, improving nursing home care, supplemental cost of the um, closeout budget, the housing bond, um, gender inclusive bathrooms, uh, postpartum depression as it re relates to um, women and my black women specifically. And that's um, from the Ellen Story Commission. Um, Governor Healy's economic plan, free state college for low income students and doula services being covered by Mass Health. Um, so also for our district, state grant awards to in the district funding for farmers and support for early childhood care. So if anybody's interested in those things, you should go on her website and get updates on those things. Some of the things that are there that are fascinating and have a lot to do with some of the work that we're doing here. Any questions or comments about that? Okay, so I am going to go into public comment. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views, your views for up to three minutes at the direction of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The Human Rights Commission will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. At this time, do we have any members of the public that would wish to make a comment? I do not see any. If someone else sees one, can you please inform me? Okay, well, thank you. For those of you who are in our KEC, um, thank you for being there and thank you for paying attention to the work that we're doing. Any um, member reports other than what's already on our agenda? Well, interesting, this will be a quick meeting, ain't it? All right, so we're going to go down to our supporting organization statements. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that means because it says before a meeting. I think it's so, something where if an issue comes up and we want to make some kind of statement as a commission, but we're oh, not okay. meeting for a month, what is the what are the procedures we would use to get uh, consent, consensus, consensus, I'm not sure what is needed from the group in order to issue a statement? I think that that was the issue, and we probably need to hear from everyone for that. So right now, as it is, um, if an issue comes up, 
Mm -hmm. um, and we would like to make a statement and put it on our website and or our Facebook page. And we don't have a meeting and we can't have a meeting because if we have a meeting, we have to post the meeting. What is any steps that any of you all think about that we could um, do in order to make sure that those statements happen, um, especially those that we feel strongly about? Um, I see Deb's hand up, Deborah, please. Yeah, it seems to me that um, there is a protocol in place for a chair or the co-chairs or a chair and some a co-chair and someone else to jointly write something and then share it around um, for other purposes. So I think we can use that same protocol that we get a request. The deadline is before our next meeting. Uh, one of the chairs takes it on, either writes it the two chairs together or one chair asks somebody else who they think is, you know, knowledgeable about the topic and sends the draft around and gives a deadline. So this was put on the agenda, I think because there was um, a concern that it was only the co-chairs. And so I think we had some sort of discussion about this. I remember having a discussion about this um, either at our last full meeting or at our retreat. And I know that this came up and also um, it came up regarding who and when we were informed of um, any human rights requests or complaints that came in. So if I'm not mistaken. So Pamela, do you have any thoughts about this? So um, Rizwana has unmuted, so I think she might have, I don't know whether she has something that she wants to say. Okay. Oh, she muted right. herself again. <laughs> right. So um, <clears throat> you're right. The, the commission has had the discussion, I think, twice now. Um, the first time following the draft of the uh, statement that, um, that went onto the commission website about the conflict in the Middle East, and then subsequent to that, a more detailed conversation. Um, I think that the protocol that, uh, that Rabbi Deb has suggested would work, but we have to be mindful that um, you're not that the statement is written, it's shared with Jennifer and I, we, we send it out to folks and then people are responding back to us because you can't engage um, with each other um, because that would be considered deliberation. So we have to be mindful of the, um, of the open meeting laws. So if you followed that protocol, which was followed in the past by this commission um, last year, uh, Philip and Ben um, would, um, would often write a statement, share it with Jennifer and I, we would send it out and people would send their comments to me so that there was um, a prompt response. So I think that that could work if you chose to do so. I'm in support of that process. Um, I think that uh, the only thing I would add is that if there's a member of the commission who feels there's a need for a statement about something and they're not a co-chair, they ought to be able to approach the co-chairs and through you, if that's more uh, in line with the rules, I don't really care, but a member of the commission, anybody on the commission ought to be able to approach the co-chairs and say, such and such issue, I think we need to do a statement on this. So then the co-chairs can say, okay, you go ahead and draft it or do it themselves and then send it around through the regular procedures so that it's not only the co-chairs who can initiate a statement when something's going on. But I, I would concur with uh, Deb's suggestion that uh, and what has been the practice so far that the co-chairs, one, one or both the co-chairs can either draft it or assign someone who has the expertise to draft it and then it can get sent around by email through Jennifer and Pam, Pamela. Okay. So I saw Jennifer's name hand up and then Riswana. Yeah. 
No, I was just wondering how you were going to determine, and Ronnie just answered that for me. Thank you. Viswana? Yeah, okay. I was actually thinking there should be some kind of a procedure, and that should be um, put in the... I am sure bylaws are being done because uh, in Human Rights Commission, these, these statements are very important, and they have to be delivered because that's our duty also, to show empathy, and um, now in this situation, we have to be neutral also, but we have to show empathy for the pain um, that is suffered by the human rights, you know, uh, concerning all these issues. So I think if, I don't know whether if it can be entered into bylaws that the statement has to be done, or there might be templates that we create so that um, we can utilize them for you know, whatever, whenever the reason, whenever some kind of event or episode arises that needs to be, uh, you know, addressed. So I, I'm just thinking that the procedure has to be there, step by step. The protocols are just protocols, but procedure is step by step implementations of the statements. So it's more so that everybody's aware of that, but the co-chair and the chair person, they can go for it, but we can also have some kind of input, I think wording wise and so on. So the question I have is, um, or the statement I have is, this has already been practice of ours, so I'm not quite sure mm -hmm. um, about it having to be specifically in our bylaws because it's already part of what we do. And there is a procedure, a past procedure that we have done. So I don't think we need to have a vote on that because we're not changing anything, if oh, I'm okay. not mistaken. But Pamela, okay. you had your hand up. Yeah, so I'm gonna agree. I, I think that it's probably best to have it as a practice rather than to have a written um, procedure and to try to amend it into the bylaws because then you are really, uh, I think, uh, yeah, well, not only that, but I think you are, uh, certain you would document that you're circumventing the open meeting law. And so it's more, it, it's oh. a better practice to have this as um, a practice that you're utilizing. Um, and while you might want to informally uh, think about a standard uh, language that you might use, I don't, I think each situation is going to be different. And so having a template, you know, might not be as easy as you, you know, as, as one might think about, because every situation is likely to, um, to have, to be very different, very fact specific. Okay. The one thing that yeah, I yeah. will ask though, is if, something goes out, um, I'm requesting um, that our members um, check your emails frequently because we never know when something's coming in. And so if we need a response, and even if you have no response, if you acknowledge to Pamela and or Jennifer that you received it and you have no response, then we know that everybody is at least um, aware of what is going on, if you don't mind. I see Deb shaking her head. Yes. <laughs> okay. So with that said, we can then move on to events. Um, D -E, uh, Joy, did you have, are you, oh no, you're scratching your ear. Okay, never mind. I saw your hand go up. Um, events from DEI. Um, I think we can hold off on Cress. Nope, go back. I'm on a, uh, 3B which is events from DEI or HRC or both. So this has moved from agenda to agenda for quite a while now. And so now I didn't include the different, the list of events. Okay, so I do Just know that- because it's been carried on, so. Yes, so coming up um, on the 26th at 5.30 at the Banks Community Center, we are holding our annual Kwanzaa celebration. Jennifer and I have been working behind the scenes on that celebration. It'll be at 5.30. Um, we have had a lot of changing and moving parts 
And um, uh, we pray that everybody here can be come and uh, be a part of it. Please be aware that right now we do not have seven readers. So we might ask you to read one of our principles and light one of our unity candles. And if that is to happen, there will be a script. So don't panic. Okay. So that's on uh, the uh, 26th of this month, which is Tuesday. Yeah. Um, we also are working on a presentation for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King celebration. And we're also working on our flag raising celebration for Black History Month, which will happen on February 1st. Those are the things that I know about. Deb, you had a question or comment about one or all three. Yeah, the Kwanzaa celebration, you, I think you said at the Bang Center. Did you see what time it was on the 26th? I'm sorry. 5.30. Thank you. And I also just wanted to add, um, this is officially a DEI office event. There's gonna be three forums coming up that I sent flyers around to. Um, yes. to gather information um, about experiences with the Amherst Police Department. And since you have the flyers, you have the dates. There's two evenings. There's one Sunday. And the um, the first event has both Spanish and Chinese interpretation. So if you know folks who, are, um, who have had experiences with the police that they would like to report, um, they can either fill out a survey, um, and that information is on the flyer, how to do that, or they can come to one of the forums. It would be really helpful to get the word out. Thanks. Um, I see two hands up. Pamela has her hand up and I think Deb's taking her hand down. Yes. You're muted, Pamela. I'm exhausted all the time now, so I'm like... <laughs> I'm I'm running on fumes, um, but uh, uh, another event that we will host at the Bang Center um, following the Martin Luther King Jr. event is the National Day of Racial Healing that um, um, follows on the, uh, the Tuesday afterwards. Um, the DEI office will um, facilitate those conversations uh, with assistance from uh, press responders and other uh, municipal staff members, which we've done in the past. Last year, we had two events, one that was open to the public and a second event that was for staff only. We will uh, again host two events um, on the National Day of Racial Healing. We will have an event that is open to the, to the public and we will seek um, facilitators from both staff members and members of the public. It's our intention to reach out to the members of the public who participated in the liberatory visioning sessions to put those skills to work. Um, you know, we've not been able to engage that group um, in a way that um, I really had envisioned. So we that announcement will go out and it's open to anyone. So on January 11th, I think is when we hope to have a um, a small training session for members of the public who would like to uh, facilitate National Day of Racial Healing um, conversations. And those conversations, uh, again, will happen on the uh, 16th. And I think that that was the only addition I had for events for DEI. Um, Any other questions or comments about um, upcoming events in the next few months? Okay, we're going to move on to updates. And the first one is from uh, DEI. Um, I'm assuming that unless, so the Crest director update will come from Ronnie. Mm -hmm. Any other DEI uh, Crest updates will come from Pamela. Okay. So um, I will, many of the DEI updates we've already talked about, um, which are the uh, upcoming events for DEI and the HRC. The other things that I would just like to flag for DEI is that um, we held our last staff workshop of the year um, last Friday. Uh, so on the third Friday of the month, 
there's a staff DEI workshop that's held. The uh, topic for last Friday was supposed to be a diversity cafe where folks, it's a self-guided um, staff members come, they can grab a cup of coffee, they can engage on a number of different topics. And, um, you know, it, it's a fairly easy lift for the DEI department and I need light lifts at this point. Um, but we were, we actually pivoted. We did not stick to topic. Um, there were initially like maybe just a handful of folks who showed up and in the conversation that we had, um, the interim police chief, Gabe Ting said, oh, what I'd really love to hear about is origin stories um, from folks. And so we started a conversation which was very, very rich where folks in the room and, and by the end of the, of the two hour session, I would think there was probably maybe like 15 of us, if not more, um, shared their origin stories. And um, it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience, which we will, um, you know, we'll replicate and, and do again, but lots of great connections, um, things, people found out things about their colleagues that really uh, reinforced um, the similarities that we have, interesting facts and um, just, it was just a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, event. So I think I do want to really highlight that and we will continue with our programming on the third Friday um, into the coming year. Also, I think the one thing that we forgot to do was a celebration of the Festival of, of Lights, which was uh, a wonderful, wonderful event. And I can't take credit for any of it because I've been overwhelmed wearing my crest uh, hat, but that event was very well attended and um, really went off without a hitch and was just a very good, good time. Um, other crest updates, uh, we uh, received two HRC complaints, um, one about uh, wage and hour violations, a second one about uh, public access. And um, we, um, one of the uh, complaints, um, the complainant has not um, followed through to pursue it. And the other one we are working on um, and and pursuing, pursuing that. Uh, uh, pursuing the completion and investigation of that complaint. Um, our youth empowerment, um, we have created a survey. Uh, the survey was reviewed by the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. They made some suggestions for um, additional information that we uh, should inquire of the youth. And that survey is ready to go out uh, publicly to um, middle and high school students and Jennifer and Asa plan to um, meet with uh, high school students in person after the new year to start gathering information about what the youth would like to do for their youth empowerment. So it's been slow going, but um, it is moving forward. Um, uh, Jennifer, if I've missed other uh, DEI events or updates, Please jump in. Um, uh, can I also add that on December 10th, uh, Jennifer, Pamela, myself, and some uh, town councilors and others um, read our town's declaration on Human Rights Day. Mm -hmm. um, it's long. You should read it. It's, it's fascinating. It had some very interesting statements in there. <laughs> that I'm not sure that this nation is adhering to. So we had a little bit of a discussion about that. Um, one, for instance, is uh, equal pay for equal work. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, that happened on December 10th. Um, thank you. Uh, I'll switch over to Crest now, unless, Jennifer, unless I've missed anything else that's DEI related. So um, <clears throat> as you know, Crest had... Uh, three vacant responder positions. That position, those positions were um, advertised. There were 13 applicants. Um, uh, six uh, individuals were, well, all of the applicants, except for the last one, which came in yesterday, all the first 12 applicants were all interviewed in first round interviews. Following that, there were uh, six applicants who went on to second round interviews. Um, we made um, 
we meaning the press interim leadership team made decisions about um, offering positions. Those positions were offered to three applicants yesterday who uh, all responded uh, yes. And um, the HR office is proceeding. So assuming that that goes well and we don't lose anyone in the meantime, um, we should have a uh, fully staffed um, under the current staffing um, parameters department by January 16th, which we're, we've targeted as the uh, start date for the for the responders. So that process has um, has sort of come to a conclusion from the interim leadership um, point of view and is in the hands of HR to complete. Um, the really significant uh, uh, announcement around CRESS is that you might have heard if you were listening to NPR that CRESS went live on dispatch on Monday. I was like, unbelievable. Um, and so that is proceeding. We are starting out small with uh, with six call types, but we've already identified um, just in the last couple of days another call type that we need to um, to add, and so we will we will continue to add um, call types um, as we proceed. Um, and so you you are all are hearing for the first time. I have not even shared this with the town manager yet, but the um, interim leadership team has been successful in receiving a secondary uh, grant from the Department of Public Health to support uh, learning opportunities for uh, uh, the CREST director, CREST responders, and dispatchers to learn about from other um, communities which are already uh, live on dispatch and who have been doing that work for, for some time. So we'll have some learning opportunities for, for them. Uh, I, I can't recall if um, at the time of the last meeting, uh, Kat Newman and Vanessa Phillips had gone to uh, to Texas to um, present at a conference with um, Sharon Sherry about the work that the Crest Department is doing with the Jones Library, um, but that they had a very successful trip and um, really in, enjoyable and got a chance to talk about the good work that the department is doing with Jones Library. Most recently, uh, Kat Newman and Brittany Houghton um, have uh, come back from the Equal Justice Initiative, which is in Montgomery, Alabama. It is the uh, brainchild and um, of Brian Stevenson, who is the author of Just Mercy. So the department is a member of the Council of State Government that's looking at alternative response units and received um, financial support to send two folks down to that conference. Um, so they were actually able, uh, Kat and Brittany were able to um, visit um, Martin Luther King's home and um, go into the Legacy Museum, which um, honors um, the deaths of those individuals who were lynched throughout U.S. history. Um, and just had a wonderful ex, uh, experience. Um, I had asked Kat to purchase materials for the department, which he did. So if you're interested in learning more about the Legacy Museum, and this is an open invitation to, um, to the public and obviously anyone on this call, we have a lot of materials that we purchased um, that are available for folks to learn more about the, the work of the Equal Justice Initiative. Um, the four responders and a couple of members of the leadership team participated in a the Harvard Government Performance Lab monthly um, cohort meeting today. Um, the department is a member of this cohort. So for the next year or so, they'll be meeting with um, researchers at, at Harvard who are trying to assist uh, municipalities and government agencies in having the best possible, you know, municipal work around the area of alternative response. And um, I think that is it for Chris. Uh, um, 
I, I, if I might be missing something, but I, I think those are the, the high points for, for the, for the Crest Department. Thank you for your report. I am going to move on and ask Ronnie. Oh, somebody has their hand up, Deb. I just wanted to say, I'm not going to wish this on you, but for someone who's doing two jobs, the fact that you just <laughs> made several hires and you received a grant and on top of everything else is amazing and miraculous. And I just want to say mad respect to you. Oh, well, thank you. What you're not hearing is all the stuff that have fallen off of the plate and onto uh, Jennifer's shoulders as uh, you know, there's lots of things that not that are not happening, but you know, just trying to work as hard as we possibly can. Well, thank you both. Mm -hmm. um, Ronnie, would you like to give a brief update on our Crest Director search? Yeah, and then I will so, follow up with the police chief search. Okay. Uh, just so you all know, there has been one meeting that I was not able to attend, but I have received uh, materials. Uh, basically, what they did there was to vet the candidates and decide which ones would be interviewed. And they did check with me on that, and my I said, fine, just go ahead. I did suggest asking if somebody else on the commission would like to actually just take that over, because it seemed like there was nobody there, and I felt like we shouldn't not be there. So I jumped in and I'm happy to continue, but because I haven't been to a meeting yet, I'd like to make it clear that if somebody is interested, you know, speak up now, or once I delve into it, it'll be hard for somebody else to get into it. So there are, it does look like there's been quite a few applicants and there are 12 or 14 who are about to be interviewed um, in the first, they were actually aiming for a lot of slots in the first two weeks of January. So what I see is that there is an effort to really do this quickly and efficiently, and also in a comprehensive way to have all these 14. I have a lot of procedural questions, and some of them maybe Jennifer could answer. I've asked the HR director to speak with her about it. But as I said, the purpose of um, doing this update is really to keep the commission informed not to reveal any confidentialities, obviously, but to keep the commission informed because when somebody is representing you, I think you need to know what's going on to the best of what you're able to know uh, and keeping people's confidentiality. So I think I have the impression that it's moving along really fast. Um, and at the next meeting, I'll have more to tell you, I'm sure. And I wanted to ask Jen because she's also on that committee, if there's anything you want to add to what I had to say. No, we, uh, there's a lot of really qualified candidates is what I would say. So it's gonna be tough to to narrow it down. And so um, to make sure that we're thorough, we're just kind of as fast as we can trying to get it done in a very thorough way. Um, and we just met, I think we met twice, but um, so we haven't started the interviews or the interview questions yet. So that'll start happening this week or next week. I also want to give a shout out to Ronnie. <clears throat> and um, we had a, num a different member of our commission who was interested but could not find the time to commit fully. And Ronnie, all the way from India, was keeping abreast of some of the um, goings on. And though she doesn't have a complete update because she wasn't uh, able to be right in the meetings because of family obligations, um, she was as updated as she possibly could. She updated me on a few things, sent some emails back and forth to Jennifer and Pamela and I. So I thank you, Ronnie, for being willing to jump in there and be our, our voice um and this most important work so thank you um as far as our chief of police update search update so the members of the committee are um a director of human resources which is um uh, melissa uh l walker um everald Hem henry who is a lawyer um lev ben ezra she is the um Director of um, the Survival Center, 
um, Derek Shea, who was the principal of Crocker Farm uh, Elementary School, our very own Jennifer, and Tim Nelson, Fire Chief Nelson, um, Mr. Butterfield, who is a retired professor from the School of uh, Eisenberg School of Management at UMass, um, David Williams, who was another retired um, professor from UMass, uh, myself, and um, Chief of Police, uh, the Chief of um, UMass Police, um, Tyrone Parham. Paul Bachman was at our first meeting. We've only had one, but he was there just as uh, listening for our first meeting. One of the things that we did do, um, we only had six applicants and we felt that that wasn't enough. So we have sent letters um, to other organizations that were put forward by members of the committee, um, the National Association of Women in Law Enforcement Executives, um, the National Alliance, um, National Order of Black Law Enforcement Agents, um, the Government Alliance on Race and Equity. We put stuff on each of their websites. Um, the National Black State Troopers Coalition and um, the Mass Chief of Police Association looking for more applicants. Um, and our next meeting will be on January 10th. So that is the only update that I have because we push things back. Um, we're trying to get more interest in the position. If we don't, I don't know what the next steps will be. And if we do, I don't know what the next steps will be but we're gonna keep moving forward. Any questions? Jennifer, anything else you wanna add? Cool. All right, let me go back to uh, my agenda, our agenda. Um, budget. I did attend, and I'm not sure if anybody was there online, but I did attend the November 20th meeting um, town council meeting. I read the opening statement, opening part of our statement. For those of you who didn't know, um, we did not have our meeting last month because we didn't have a quorum. So, um, but I did up our request from to ten to fifteen thousand, and I felt like um, I got that feedback from a number of people that we should increase our ask. So I did. Um, one of the things, and me personally, that was a little uh, daunting was I was there and there was um, a conversation afterwards um, about increasing or adding or a request for $8.3 million for the library project. And, he, and everybody was talking about it. And I felt myself getting a little fatimled, annoyed or something because you're going to put 8.3 in the library project and we're asking for a measly $10,000, $15,000. You know what I'm saying? So um, for me as a person and then I as one of your co-chairs um, felt a little slighted if that goes through and our request doesn't. And I don't have an update on whether it went through or not. So I can't give you an update but it was interesting to hear that. Made me a little annoyed. Any questions or comments about that? All righty. Um, on to the Affordable Housing Trust. There is not really another update, based, um, but they're continuing to work not only with the town, but with the state because the um, Affordable Housing Bills are statewide right now. Um, we are the, not the only community that is struggling with affordable housing. And it is on Governor Healy's agenda um, and budget um, to try to get affordable housing for everyone. So that's the only update I have on that. Um, questions, comments, Jennifer? So um, CSSJC member Everett Henry, who just mentioned on the police chief search is also on the affordable housing trust. No, he's on the ZBA, he's on the zoning board of appeals. And over the next course of, I believe there are Thursday evening meetings, 
the ZBA will be determining how people are eligible for the project that's happening on Ball Lane. And so Correct. he's asked for folks to come and attend those meetings as they you know, go through the process of determining eligibility and the lottery system that they'll use and so forth. So just wanted to add that because that's a wonderful project for home ownership. Um, I think there's two and three bedroom homes. And can I go back one step, back to Everett Henry. For the chief of police search committee, we did name him our chair. So Everett, Everett Henry is our chair of that search. I forgot to mention that. So thank you for bringing up his name. It jogged my memory. Mm -hmm. um, says town manager update. And our town manager is not here. So does he have an update? So I or think... Oh, Ronnie was, go ahead. I, I, was, I was just going to say, I have a question that I was going to pose that I was hoping the town manager would update on, but perhaps Pamela can do that, which is about our bylaws and where things stand. So I was, I, when I saw this on the agenda, which I did not look at until um, today, I thought, oh, that is meant to be an update on the bylaws. Mm -hmm. I have not received any um, communication from the town council. Generally, I try to um, to send an email to um, inquire before the before the meeting, just to see if there's been any activity. But I did not do that. I haven't heard from them directly, and I have not. Um, um, I did not uh, send them an email to inquire. So I will do that as a follow up um, to this meeting. And if I learn of learn of anything right away, I will send it out to uh, the commission. If not, I will um, ask them to, to provide some additional information for your uh, January meeting. So I have one other thing I wanna bring up in relation to this. If you'll remember when we were discussing the bylaws, there was this question of who, there was something about somebody on the town council, one of the councilors being a representative to us and a liaison to us. And we had some exchanges with Lynn Griesmer because we were asking who that is. And it turns out there isn't anyone. And I'm sure I don't have, I could probably find this email. I'm sure she said, I will be the representative for you. So I think it might be time to remind her and ask her to join our meetings if, if she could. Right. So I, um, I will follow up on that as well. So generally when we're sending, setting up the meeting, um, and you all receive your Zoom invite. We send a Zoom invite to the town councilor as well. My guess is that we probably did not do that for this meeting. Um, so we'll need to get her into the um, into the onto the list of individuals who receive the Zoom meeting and, and are regularly asked to attend. Um, I think um, that her. Um, Initial response was to be the person until the first, uh, until the new council is sworn in, and then they'll make some decisions. So, hopefully, we'll get we'll get that smoothed out. We I, thought that, but she didn't say that in her email. Yeah. She just said, "I'll be it." Obviously, if she had not been elected, she yeah wouldn't. But I think it may help in addition to sending her the email to just remind her of the, of the context. Mm -hmm. She's not just getting it because she's the head of the town council. She's getting it because she's our representative. And if she doesn't want to, she can come or she can designate someone. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to ensure that that connection to the town council is something that we that we have because it states in yeah. our bylaws that we're supposed to have that. And right. Part of our role is to be an advisory body to the town council. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And I will say that for the disability access uh, um, committee and for the uh, CSSJC, there generally has been a, a town councilor who attends those those meetings on a regular. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll definitely follow up with that. But I'm just taking responsibility for I don't think that we sent her an invitation for tonight's meeting. Okay. And so that that may be why she's she's not here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other updates? We any we have 
anything that we've recently put on our website or Facebook page? Who can I ask? Who manages that? Because I don't have I I don't have access to it. Yeah. I'm so Jennifer, okay. you manage it. Okay. So I think I'm going to put the Kwanzaa event on the Facebook page tomorrow, but mm -hmm. um, there was a rule from IT that they didn't really want members to have the access because, you know, members, uh, their terms end and then it's kind of like they still have the access. So uh -huh. um, I've been doing it. I just, and I try to put the statements on there when they come out. What I would say is, we just kind of need to reshape all of it, right? Like I, I feel like we could sit down in a meeting and kind of go through and change. So there's a lot of information on the front part of the page where you don't really get to the stuff that you probably want to see because it's small on the right hand side. Um, there's the outdated statements on there that somebody had mentioned. So we can also create ways to, um have those be links on a, you know, on a subset of the page so that when you open it up, we should probably also, I was thinking, is there a Massachusetts Human Rights Commission? I, I guess so I could say that. I don't no, know. I, I know that each town has one. Not sure if there's an, I can't imagine that we don't. Yeah. At the state level, I think there's probably a lot of uh, several different agencies that you could could um, we could ask commission on discrimination. Um, well, you keep muting yourself for some reason. I don't know how yeah, that's happening. I, I, yeah, I'm tired. That's what so I was just saying on the state on the state uh, level, there are probably several different um agencies that we could link to, including the Mass Commission Against Discrimination, as well as uh, the Attorney General's Office, and um, a number of different agencies that would provide redress to um, acts of discrimination. So we could perhaps work on putting together a list that could be added to the page. Um, Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know if you guys want your pictures on it. It would be nice so that if people look on the website that they know who the individuals are other than a name, <laughs> which could be as simple as I can take your photo. Well, maybe when we have just sent and Tyler here, but I think it's a great way people can associate a, a face to someone for them to recognize, you know, maybe in the grocery store or something and say, Hey, I've been meaning to come talk to you. Um, about A, B, and C, right? It just makes a connection a little bit more without having to have such a formal connection, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And so um, maybe one day when we're full, the full board is here, I'll take a photo so we can put that on the website or we could meet in person and put it on the website. Um, but I just think we could update and, and do some question as time, right? Um, and uh, change the look of the website. And so I know Jacenta had talked about possibly being a part of doing some of that as well while she was on break. So I'll reach out it to her. It doesn't need to take a long time, you know, if it's just the photo. No, not the photo, but the whole revamp of the page. Uh, well, yeah, good thing. And that doesn't necessarily <laughs> the commission. That doesn't necessarily take a long time, but it does take some time. Right, and in the list of priorities, right? So, I have to go back to my agenda. I keep clicking on different things, my links. Um, upcoming events, we already did that. So, any other upcoming events that are not HR, DEI specific that we know about? Um, I know we just celebrated Hanukkah and I know it was a difficult time for some given what's going on over in the Middle East. So there's been a lot of prayer um, starting October 7th, but especially in the last um, eight days, um, well, eight days from the 7th to the 15th, but um, continue prayers for peaceful 
resolutions, um, not only in the Middle East, but also in, um, oh my God, I'm, I'm blanking. Russia and um, Ukraine, Ukraine, that's the place. Um, as well as just, you know, this is supposed to be the season of giving and love, and we are still faced with a lot of angst and hatred. And um, I just, I personally, I don't understand. I don't understand. Um, I know that we can get angry or annoyed with one another, but to have such deep-seated hatred is something I don't personally understand, um, which is part of the reason why I'm on this commission. And I love doing some of the work that we're doing because it gives us the opportunity to bring people together um, that are different and learn from each other about our differences and our likes, likenesses. So is that a word? Likeness? Likenesses? Likeness. Whatever. Anyway, um, so let's keep moving forward, everybody. Um, no other comments about upcoming events. I need to update. Um, I did also attend the school committee meeting last week. I was a little annoyed. I wasn't going to attend. And then something happened. I was watching it on TV. I got up out of my bed, got dressed, and went to the meeting and offered a public comment. I don't know if anybody was listening, but I had to tamper myself because there was a few things. Joy's over here laughing, so she must have been listening. <laughs> um, there was a few things that kind of set my teeth on edge, um, mainly that there was a vote from the school committee to overhaul our athletic fields. Um, I have been a part of that process for 20 something years. When we went from a cinder track to an all weather track, I was part of that push. And it's, um, our fields are not conducive for school pride. I'm gonna put it that way. Um, where, so, and one of the statements I made is that one of the poorest communities in Western Massachusetts have better facilities for our student and student athletes and community members than we have. And I'm not sure how that is, but what prompted that was there was a vote to overhaul and the school committee approved for the overhaul to take place in the current interim school committee wanted to rescind that vote. So that's what prompted um, the discussions that you've heard recently about that. And for me personally, as someone who worked in the school starting in 1981, retiring in 2021, was that um, anytime that there is um, money or a change or a change to the detriment of the education of our students, the most um, delicate of our students are the ones that suffer the most um, because they have taken away some of the things that get our children to school, like culinary arts and um, clothing and textiles. And one of the teachers even said in the past that one of the most prideful moments of our students is wearing the dress that they made to the prom, you know? Um, they've taken away wood shop and, and auto mechanics and some of the um, interests that our non-highly academic individuals uh, run to that get us in, get the kids into the building. And once they're in the building, we can work with them so they too get their complete education. And some of those fields for the athletics is part of that whole process. And now they're, you know, I'm a track athlete. I mean, a track co uh, official all over the country. I have seen beautiful facilities. And I know that some of the, we're not gonna get some of the most state-of-the-art facilities, but we need to do better than we are doing. And I had to condemn what I feel is my own track. I was, me, I'm the one who said it was unsafe and it is. 
Um, so I was at that school committee meeting. Um, this is not the first time, maybe I think this is the third time I've spoken up um, in the past year and a half um, school committee meetings. They also um, have a subcommittee right now that are looking into how they are going um, to proceed with the um, superintendent search. So that's another update um, that is going to affect all of us in the town and our children and our children's children. I have two grandchildren in the high school currently, and I know that Joy's daughter is a senior at the high school right now. Um, so I'm not sure. Oh, and Jennifer's son. Oh my God, how can I forget? Is there as well. So um, those are some other updates. I'm going to, again, if we have no more comments, reach back to our public. I know there was three members and now there are two members of the public. So I'm gonna read our statement once again. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called upon, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns and residential address. Residents are welcome to express your views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The HRC will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. So if you are in the public comment and you would like to have a public speak, please raise your hand so that we can bring you in. And again, I see none. So on to our last, any other topics that the chair did not reasonably anticipate 48 hours in advance to, of the meeting. I do have two things for us to be conscious of. Um, as members of the committee, we have our meetings once a month, but that is not the only thing that we do. We have um, at least one every six weeks or so, but right now more than one a month um, activities, events that we're putting on. And um, I'm asking that members of the committee make every effort into attending those things that we are sponsoring. That was the first thing. And the second thing is we have at least an empty space for a high school student on this board. And I know that we have at least Tyler, if I'm not mistaken, will be done at the end of this school term. So we need to start thinking about um, filling those spaces if we can, okay? So those are the only two other things that I thought of as we were talking. Does anybody have anything else? Okay, well, with that, I will um, say that I pray that I'm seeing everybody on the 26th. Um, I pray that your next weeks and days are filled with wonderful community and wonderful family. I know sometimes when we get all our families together, it can be a great time and, you know, isn't it time for you to go home now? <laughs> Times like that as well. So, um, I pray nothing but peace for all of us in this nation and all nations. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And with nothing else said, I am calling this, uh, I, I will uh, take a motion to adjourn the meeting. Anybody? I so move up oh, and so did Ronnie. <laughs> so I second. Uh, so I have a, okay. So Ronnie moved that we adjourn the meeting, second by Deborah. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay, have a good night. Any opposed? It is so. We will see you on the 18th of January, I want to say. Yeah, but first the 26th. Huh? Oh, well, but we'll first the 26th. 26. <laughs> yes. Our next meeting should be on the 18th. 17th? 
the third 18th. Wednesday in January. The third Wednesday in January, I think it's the 18th. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Everybody stay Perfect safe out there. Holidays, and take everyone. care. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. Have a good night, everyone. Okay, good night.